I like to kind of uh, mention to people is that you want to be doing these projects here, like in, in Canada, in the US, in Europe, where we have strict regulations, where we know there's on, ongoing oversight, because it's, it's going to be done elsewhere. Uh, I mean, that if it's done in North America, there's a certain level of standard uh, that we're going to be held to. And knowing that that's the reality, I think people that get on board with saying, like, listen, we know this is, this, is, this is going to happen, but as long as we have a say in the process of how this power is generated. And also, uh, when you really look at the data, this is the solution, um, certainly as, uh, for, the, for the foreseeable future. Uh, and and I, as you mentioned, with Anfield, I like to look at com companies that have a, a big, big upside. Uh, you're trading at about what 72% discount to, on average, to a lot of other companies. Uh, so, I mean, you're looking at a deep, deep discount where there's uh, a lot of potential market gain and market share for someone to, to have when you're looking at your company in particular. The question always is when you when you look at some of these stories, is you know, are they planning to go into production themselves, or if not, how you know how does production come about? You know. And, you know, is production something, is it a function of, you know, uh, enticing someone else to want your asset in order to add it to its portfolio in order to uh, create value that way? And, and the, you know, my concern is always, you know, when you're talking about internal strategies for a company, you can't depend on outside sources to kind of facilitate your strategy. Um, you know, our strategy is to get to production because and that's what we're doing ourselves. Um, you know, whether it's through our own mill or through an agreement that's in place with somebody else who has a processing facility. Uh, you know, if, if a Canadian company is looking to produce, you know, you can, there's only one place to go right now and that's Cameco. So, you know, at the end of the day, you're probably, you know, creating a resource that you're hoping at some point will be bought by a Cameco uh, in order to kind of, you know, generate that upside. And that's kind of a strategy of, of sorts. But you know, for, to depend on Cameco to look at you and say, I want to pay top dollar for you, uh, it, it's pretty risky, you know, because yeah. you know, Cameco has a lot of resource and a lot of time. And it all depends on how much time as a, you, are, you have as a junior to wait yes. for that time when Cameco decides that you're of value. Um, That's a great, may a great not point. Be a top dollar. The can move so fast as well, like because it's a niche market. Yeah. Um, I think it was even Rick Rule was mentioning when it moves, it moves. Yes. So that's where I kind of highlight to people is that this has shown indications it's moving. Yeah. Uh, so if you want to get involved, you should get involved sooner than later. Yeah. Uh, and two, whatever your strategy isn't, uh, Kimiko, you've got a lot of wiggle room to, to wait. You know, like you said, and they can just go, well, we'll turn that one back on. We'll come back to in six months. <laughs> yeah, let's see where we're at. Uh, exactly. yeah. that's, uh, you know, although you might get a run in the stock, that's not a, a great thing for a company. Whereas yeah. we've got a whole strategy here for a company that uh, makes sense from, from uh, start to finish. And, yeah. uh, and that's what we've been building for the past, you know, number of years. You know, we kind of laid out our plan, you know, we ultimately wanted to be a produ you know, producing entity. Um, in the copper space, we had done small scale production out in Chile. And the whole idea was to look at, you know, what are the opportunities in the U.S.? So in Chile, when it comes to copper, uh, the state basically runs all the processing plants. So you're basically artisanal miners who sell raw material to the processing plant and you get paid a percentage of the spot price. So when we moved to the U.S., we thought, okay, let's look for something that we can do that's similar um, to start. And at the time, when you're looking at the market, there was only one producing conventional mine. In existence in the U.S., which is unbelievable, but it's the case, and it's uh, the White Mesa Mill held by Energy Fuels. So we started picking up properties within a hundred-mile radius of that mill to say, okay, we're going to just basically sell the material, a toll mill, through that mill, um, and, and see what happens. Uh, but you know, at the same time, you don't you don't want ultimately be a price taker. So we thought, let's we could start there, but let's look around and see what else is available to us. And that's when we realized there are only two other mills in existence in the U.S., which is, you know, incredible. Yes. Um, a lot of shutdowns in the 80s. So um, as we started looking around, we realized that, you know, the Uranium One mill is probably the most attractive one compared to the one held by Rio Tinto. The, the Uranium One mill was, was smaller uh, and had a very small environmental footprint. So much more attractive. Uh, and we lucked out, too, because... 
Uh, there was a party out of Australia that tried to buy it and the deal fell through and, I, and then we found, we managed to reach out to Uranium One to get something started. But it was, um, it was an interesting process and knowing that we could get one of the, you know, three mills in existence, we thought was quite a coup. Um, but, but it was also just part of the plan. You know, once again, we're looking at production. How do we get into production? We need a facility to allow us to produce. And that was the mill. And second, we know we can't produce in the near term through uh, conventional means. We have to look for something on the ISR side. That means not only picking up properties, but finding a way to process the material from those properties. And that's why, you know, as we build along, we're saying, how can we get material into the final form that would be bought by utilities? And But we also uh, bought uh, a third set of assets from a group called Cotter Corporation uh, last year, the Charlie Mill, so the Charlie um, project or the Charlie Mine. This is something that was coveted by a number of other parties and it sits in between two of Uranium One's existing uh, mines in Wyoming, two mines on either, one on either side, that's the same trend. And about two and a half years to get it done, but we finally closed on that. And this is something which can go into production very quickly because of its proximity to Uranium One's mines, there's infrastructure there. We essentially just need to build a pipe into uh, the satellite plant. So the cost you know, is less than $7 million to get into production. So it's, it's an incredible opportunity for us. Yeah, that's a huge, uh, like I said, a huge coup to, to have that, to get that into production here. And you know, what's, what's the time frame on this year? That's about a two year time frame. It's 24 yeah. months to get that up and running. Yeah. yeah. And that's and a big one to get amazing for to get the production uh, that quick. We're talking low cost near term, you know, which is uh, kind of an incredible combination. So we're very lucky. And, and the idea is to, you know, take the, the 24 products we acquired from Uranium One to build a pipeline that we can dig into once we've depleted Charlie. So look at another 10, 15 million pounds, hopefully, you know, that we can use, you know, with the same agreement we have in place with Uranium One to build this long term production complex out in Wyoming. Uh, you know, along with the Charlie project, we acquired some assets from Cotter, which are hard rock uh, in Colorado called the Westland properties. These properties historically have about 11 million pounds of uranium and 53 million pounds of vanadium. So they're, they're more vanadium mines than they are uranium mines, but that, actually, uh, that presents another opportunity for us if we're looking at battery metals. Sure. Right, and we can also look to add another uh, a vanadium circuit onto our mill in order to produce vanadium at our own mill. We've got lots of moving parts, lots of opportunities, and that's the whole idea of Anfield is that we're looking for ways not to just focus on strict production through one facility, but to look at different ways to reach production, you know, you know in whatever material we have. You know, close in transaction with some large parties, um, which, you know, given our size, I think a lot of people are surprised. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's very encouraging.